Hi, it's Alex. This time I want to talk about the topic of how to deal with an authority figure who's acting in a way that you think is really unreasonable. So this could come up if you're living with your parents and your parents are treating you in a way that you think is unreasonable. It could come up in school, like with a teacher, a professor, or an administrator. It could come up in a wide range of different contexts. I think the ideas here are pretty general. So say you're in some sort of situation and someone is trying to impose some sort of rule on you or enforce a rule or make, not making an exception to a rule where you think it really would make sense for there to be an exception or anything like that. And you go to the person, you ask them for what you want, and you're not getting results. That's what this is about. I think in situations like this, it's really easy to get frustrated. And one thing I've noticed with myself is that when I get frustrated at an authority figure, I often start having negative thoughts about the person. So I might start thinking, oh, they're being uncooperative, or they're just being acting maliciously, and I might start reading negative intentions into them. I might start thinking, oh, they're trying to control me, uh, things like that. The more negative thoughts I have about the authority figure, the more angry I become. And when I'm angry, I'm more likely to act disrespectfully towards that person. So my first piece of advice here is to get a grip on your own thoughts. I like to do this by writing in a journal, write out what I'm experiencing, uh, and then try to work through them. And I want to start thinking about the authority figure in as positive way a way as possible. And one way I do this is by trying to find positive interpretations for their actions. So for example, one problem that I've had a number of times in my education is that I've wanted to get an, an exception to an academic requirement. So I go to an authority figure and I'm like, hey, can I get this class to satisfy this requirement? I really think it would make sense. In some cases, I've had people say, no, you can't do that, initially. What I found, though, is that if I think hard enough, I can usually find some valid and legitimate reasons that a person would answer no, especially the first time I ask for something. When I start to do that, it helps me to feel calmer, and it helps me to have more respect for the person who is not giving me what I want, incidentally. I'm able to kind of connect with them, empathize with them, be on the same page with them. I may still not agree with them, but I can be like, oh yeah, I understand why you might not want to do this. If you're not sure why they would object, if you can't think up a legitimate reason, I think the best thing for you to do is ask and listen. Ask the person, well, why wouldn't you want to do this for me? Or why are you requiring me to do this? Or why are you enforcing this rule? And then listen to them, and try to ask them to explain themselves until you really fully understand their reasoning. So that's my first piece of advice. My second piece of advice is to be patient with the person, and be persistent. So maybe you meet with someone, and the meeting doesn't seem like it goes very well. Maybe you listen to them, and they don't listen to you very much. Maybe you come away feeling frustrated. Don't give up yet. If you're really convinced that what you're asking for is a good idea, and is something that a person who is thinking rationally and being reasonable would agree to in the end, I think it's worth being persistent. Go back to the person a second time, a third time, even more, and talk to them again, and explain to them where you're coming from, but again, try to start by listening to them and asking them for explanations. One thing I've noticed is that when I ask people to explain themselves, and then I listen to them, it sets up like a pattern of behavior that they often will echo. So if I listen to them, then they're going to be more prone to listen to me, which is what I want. I want to explain where I'm coming from so that they understand it. I found that when I approach authority figures in that manner, I'm much more likely to get what I want. I have some examples of this. I went to University of Delaware, and I wanted them to stock SEPTA schedules at the information desk. And when I asked them about it, I talked to the person in charge. He wasn't particularly receptive about it the first time, and he came up with a long list of reasons why he didn't want to stock them. I contacted him again, and I contacted SEPTA, 
And within a short period of time, they were stocking SEPTA schedules, and they have done so ever since. I've actually had a lot of other examples of this. I've gotten exceptions to academic requirements. Uh, I even planted the idea in the heads of some people who were in charge of the math department at the University of Delaware that I thought it would be great to move the math library into the faculty lounge. Initially, most of the people I talked to, in fact, all the people I talked to were like, oh, that's not going to happen, I don't, and they came up with reasons why it wasn't a good idea. But I listened to them, and I persisted in explaining to them why I thought it was a good idea, and within a couple years, they actually implemented that idea, and it's still that way today. So, these are just a few examples from my life. I hope that you have gained some insight from this. Uh, I hope that next time you're in a situation where a, a figure of authority isn't giving you what you want, that you're able to view them with more respect, and you're able to understand where they're coming from, but you're also able to be persistent and to not get frustrated and not give up, because sometimes I think that's the most important thing. And you're able to continue the dialogue with them until you both come to a mutually beneficial arrangement. Thank you.